Hello, Mr. Twist. We are at Mobile World Congress 2016 and uh, we are in a new booth uh, talking about a new company, a more extended one. What exactly the new Nokia means? The new Nokia is a company which is built from two very strong companies and now gives the combined company a a very good market reach in all of the markets that we work in and an extremely strong portfolio that spans all of the different communication sectors mobile, fixed, IP optical, transport networks, applications, analytics and it, kind of, it opens up the business opportunities for us to a much greater stage as well as giving us a real powerhouse of innovation behind us to able to address those different markets. Nokia is known mostly for its consumer segment till now. Are we going to see a more uh, dedicated company to the business sector? The Nokia that you see now is focused on uh, networks and enterprises. It's not to say that our tech division might not consider doing something building on the N1 platform which they've done so far, but he here, the team that we have at Mobile World Congress, here we're focused on the networks and the applications of technology to the enterprise sector primarily. The next step is building on the platform that we have. But we're undergoing some fairly significant changes in the market in terms of technology and the business opportunities and we are in an extremely strong position to be able to address those. So what I mean by that is we're going through a, a change in the market where instead of communications working primarily for people the development is communication between things, the so-called Internet of Things. And the way that we can look at it is for every person there's likely to be somewhere between 10 and 100 connected devices. And that puts very different requirements on the networks. It opens up huge opportunities for different vertical market sectors to be addressed and with new business opportunities for us and our customers and new um, ideas of what people at the end of the chain, the, the consumers, can actually use from technology. You, know, you can imagine a, a connected car, for example, that tells you where the parking space is free and drives you towards it. A connected car that tells you it's not safe to overtake because there's a car coming quite fast behind that you can't see. A car that tells you to brake because a car four in front of you that you can't see has had to break because there's something in the road. You know, that type of potential opens up um, business opportunities, it opens up benefits to people in terms of their safety, their security and so on. Um, we've got 15 different use cases built on this Internet of Things to try and bring it to life. You know, otherwise it's very dry in terms of technology. You know, the fact that there's a new protocol to connect devices in the networks is quite difficult to explain unless you show what you can do with it. You, know, you can show how you can do smart parking, you show how cars can cross at an intersection without uh, bumping into each other because they've actually been talking to each other about what the gap is between. You can monitor a, uh, a network of water pipes and show where the leaks are and identify where you should dig the road up to pick up the leak. All of which are enabled by having these huge numbers of sensors connected. And by huge numbers, you know, we're talking about billions of sensors and we're talking about trillions of connection requests to these devices every day as this market takes off. And it will take off. You know, this is just the beginning of a new market for the Internet of Things. Uh, this event, the Mobile World Congress, is a trend for the entire year. Yes, the statements that are making here shall be the main focus for the entire year. What shall be yours, the key words of Nokia for 2016? Uh, we're focusing on effectively four things. Number one is innovation, the powerhouse that we have. You know, Nokia as the custodian of Bell Labs and the other innovations that we have and the uh, the developments that we have from Nokia Technologies with things like the Ozo camera, that gives us a platform, a, you know, our position on the world stage to come up with these new ideas and, be, and show the world what we can do. And then in terms of the business opportunities, that's in three things. There's the Internet of Things that I've talked about, 
it's the transformation of networks into what they call the cloud, where instead of having a network built as standard building blocks, you have a computing platform with software running across it, which perform each of the different functions that you need. And that means a big transformation for the networks and new business opportunities. And the third theme is the migration closer and closer towards 5G. So 5G brings additional capacity, it brings shorter latencies, a response time between uh, pressing a button on your phone and the reaction which comes into play when you're trying to do something like virtual reality for example or mission critical applications and those standards need to develop and we're, we're, we're launching the platforms that will enable that market to take off. So it's those things, it's the transformation to cloud, it's IoT brought to life, it is uh, 5G showing the potential of what that is, all of them underpinned by innovations. And as a company that is playing in all of those areas, the products, the services, uh, the operators, the enterprises, we're in a pretty good position, a pretty good platform that we can build on as a combined company with a very strong and uh, very broad portfolio. You seem to have a very strong appetite now for uh, new acquisitions. Are we going to extend them? Uh, I am in no position to be able to answer a question like that because any suggestion that we would be buying a company would be uh, a forward-looking statement that I'm sorry I simply couldn't give. <clears throat> Once again the, the question about uh, the big impact on the countries where Alcatel Lucen had a great unit like Romania, yes? How are you going to change all these things or integrate all these teams? One of the real beauties of the combination of Nokia and Alcatel Lucent is the comparatively small amount of overlap between the two companies both in terms of geographical footprint and in terms of the portfolio so we actually end up with a very strong very powerful portfolio and an extremely strong footprint in all of the countries around the world and why would we want to move away from that. that that's the reason that we brought the two companies together of course there's going to be transition you know you need to when you bring two companies together you have overlapping functions that we need to work through we've talked about you know, the synergy benefits that we expect to come from that and that will of course mean some organizational changes or whatever that underpin how we bring those two companies together Bell Labs is uh, a very important asset it's uh, one of the crown jewels, if you like, from Alcatel-Lucent with an incredibly powerful history of innovations and first-to-market developments and they're behind some of the uh, ground-changing developments that we're showcasing here. If you look at the front of our stand, those demonstrations of where we can go with 5G, the Bell Labs team has helped immensely in pulling those together. It's, it's kind of a showcase of their capabilities and what they're bringing to the market. Of course we're going to build on that. What should be your targets for this year, let's say, Nokia as a big company after this acquisition? What do you expect? How do you expect to grow? What, what are your expectations? I think what we're looking at here, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about the financials or the, the growth in the market or the market sector sizes. Uh, this is um, a very rapid integration that we've been through already you know the track record of what we've achieved in the last six weeks since the you know the, uh, the acquisition became official in, in the middle of January is phenomenal 10,000 leaders appointed already so this is not about spending a lot of time how do you merge two organizations together this is about a very powerful company moving forwards with customers with building relationships with extending the portfolio I mean we've made 40 launches here around Mobile World Congress. That's a company looking forwards. It is a very uh, big discussion here about the mobile operators who are going to lose some something uh, in, the, in the game if they are not going to converge with the fixed uh, services. How do you position yourself between this fixed mobile convergence? One of the other benefits is that we have extremely strong fixed access and extremely strong mobile access. and there doesn't necessarily need to be a distinction between the two. If a company can operate fixed, we can work with them. If a company operates only mobile, we can work with them. But I think the idea of fixed being entirely separate from mobile is kind of historical to some extent because 
what do people call in the end of a fixed network? Some form of mobility, like Wi-Fi, for example. So the question is, how far to the edge does the fiber come? How far to the home does the fiber come? How far to the business does the fiber come? And depending on how far it comes, you can have a 5G network, you can have an LTE network, you can have fiber to the home. So the network capabilities are all there. So that's kind of a business decision for operators to take and whichever way they choose to go, that's great, we're there behind them.